bird. <laughs> <laughs> hey folks, we're out in the woods again. Mike, Joe, and Scout. We're gonna do an overnighter. We're gonna build a camp and uh, make a hobo village of tarps. <laughs> Cook a lot of food. Mm -hmm. Drink some beers. A couple of beers. Should be good. And see. <laughs> you get one of those like clacker boards. Right. <laughs> Uh, what, are you, what are you thinking, Mike? Pretty good spot. Yeah. I think we found a spot. Mike's standing smack dab in the middle of it. There is a lot of area. So we got this, we do have this one ironwood that's coming up and arcing and broke off there. But we are going to take that down for firewood and building uh, materials. So we're all good on that. And the rest of the area is good to go. Yep. Mm-hmm. So that's that iron wood we had to get down. Mike's just going at it with his Norlin right now. Sorry folks, it uh, it went before we could could film it. So anyways, got her down and uh, now we won't die in our sleep. So we got our tree down and we just need to buck it up. Um, probably gonna use four pieces of it for the start to make a bench. And uh, we'll go through the bench making process with you guys too. So basically I only want about four pieces this, this long for the bench. And this is a nice thick tree so it'll be good to take it off of this tree. Oh, we got done cutting our four pieces for the bottom of our, our bench. And this stuff is like super, super dense ironwood. We got four pieces, probably about five or six inches thick. So that took us a better part of an hour to do it, both of us. And uh, our arms are shot right now. So I think we're gonna put the bench making aside for a minute. We're gonna start working on the, the tarp shelters. And maybe have some lunch and go back to the bench after because uh, like I said, both our arms are shot. So tarp time. So I'm gonna tie up this uh, communal ridge line. We're gonna try to do um, Adirondack shelters facing each other with no gap in the middle. So I'm gonna try and use this uh, ridge line as a central ridge line for both of our, our tarps. And I'm just tying a tot line hitch on it. So for the tot line, you guys have seen me tie this a million times. It's just two on the inside. So that's two there. And then I come out on the outside and do the same thing once. Super easy. And that way you can adjust how taut it gets. I'm gonna leave this one loose because I gotta tighten up the other side. Just gonna do the same thing on the other side. And I wanna make it about chest height because that's the height it needs to be for, for the shelter to work properly, at least with the size of tarps that we have. So, there we go. So this is a nine by nine sill nylon tarp. And the other one is a 10 by 10. So it's gonna be off a little bit, but it should still work fine. Basically, I want to put my tarp on a diagonal and I want to come down to the second tie out. So, sorry, the third tie out. So there's the first, second, third, and then I'm just going to attach my pre tied Prusix on there, the toggles, and then it's nice and easy. It's nice having these pre tied Prusix on. Nice and tight. We flip the tarp over to this side. We're gonna use the other one on the other side, no problem. We just gotta peg it out. So we've got it tied up where we want it, like I showed you guys. And then we have to figure out where we wanna peg it. Um, it all depends on, on how big you want it, but I think 
You start the third. Oh, maybe that's not the right one. We'll start this one, the, the second one out. Peg it down and we'll go from there, see what happens. So we finished the one Adirondack shelter and we're going to set the other one up uh, right in front of it. And it was just kind of like a big tent inside. It'd be pretty cool. Um, this is gonna, this top flap is gonna flap over top of the other one. And we are going to be very protected in here. I really like this tarp configuration. At least it's a nice soft leafy uh, bed. Yeah, it could have been worse. <laughs> could have been worse. They're not good though. They have nacho cheese in them, and it's just soaked like ghetto. What are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Tied up. All right. Our shelter's all set up, and uh, I just need to create a little bit more headroom. So I'm just going to attach this P cord on here and pull it back. And since there's no tree behind us to pull this off, we're going to use the stick that Mike is holding, and we're going to peg it down behind there. So just wrap it around once or twice. Once is probably sufficient, but whatever. And then we'll peg it down right behind it. Let go and see. So there we go. First try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it all takes a lot of tweaking and stuff. It's no big deal. Good. Now that should give us a bunch more space. Let's go on inside and check it out. My tarp might even cover almost the entire ground. Indeed. Yeah. So we have a full ground sheet in here then. So this is not too shabby. So Michael sleep on this side and Scout and I will sleep on this side. You could even space these out farther and uh, have a fire in the middle just with a big opening in the top. But we don't need to do that for warmth today because it's not going to get too cold. Like you knew what you were doing, Michael. Almost. <laughs> what are you doing, Mike? Cooking some lunch. You just opening a can with your Swiss Army knife? Tempting, yeah. Well, that's pretty fancy. Look at you go. Oh, now you got all the dust from the store inside your suit. <laughs> we're just cooking up some lunch right now. Mike's got a chunky soup in his uh, se seagull Philly can, and I've got uh, just some English muffins that I'm toasting up. I'm gonna put some some peanut butter on it. I think I'll give Scout some peanut butter too because he is. All about it. You all about it? You all about it, bud? You could have better beer. You're probably drink shit stuff. Oh, it's yeah. Shit, definitely. They don't really seem like the craft beer kind of scene. Alexander Keith, sit up, bud. So you, uh, as of today, you can buy beer at grocery stores, huh? Really? In Ontario, yeah. That is awesome. So uh, Great, Great Lakes, the one that uh -huh. makes the Canuck and the one we're having today. They have uh, one one to Toronto. They are carrying it out of grocery store. Fantastic. Here you go, peanut butter doggy. But you have to check out the beer right there. Like, you oh. can't carry it around the store. Well, just take it. I wonder why. Uh, just so you so can. So kids can't see yeah, it. Yeah, or... you can't buy it and give it to someone. But I mean, if you just want to get in a golden beer, you can go when it's busy and not. Lunch is done now. We're both kind of chilly. Uh, wind's picking up and sitting here not doing anything for a little bit. Get a little bit chilled down. So we're going to go get some firewood and the wood, the rest of the wood we need for our bench. So I've got my silky saw. I think uh, Mike's going to bring his Adventure Storm Buck saw and I'll probably bring my little small Sandvik axe, my 20 inch one. This thing looks pretty badass. It does. I'm pretty happy with it. Oh yeah, nice and toasty. So we are uh, all set up in here, looking comfy. You could fit easy three people in here, four if you had to. We're gonna fit two uh, two of us in this guy. Ice scooter. Mike and I have gathered a lot of wood. I don't think we're done for the night, but we decided we're gonna build our bench first and see what kind of firewood we have left over after that. So basically we set up the little mock bench of what we're gonna do. So we've got four rounds, and those are the rounds that we cut earlier on today, that iron wood, that horrible decision to cut the iron wood for our bench. 
And those will be these four, right? So we got four on the ground. Then you're gonna go two long ones across, a substantial size, and then two uh, shorter ones going across there. And all this is doing is just building you kind of like, like Jenga, like levels going up so you get more height. So you, you're not sitting with your knees bent, or you're not sitting too low. I, I'm sure we're not gonna go too high because that'd be more work. But So once this is this, we're going to stack logs lengthways and we're only gonna make it as wide as it needs to be for two people. There's no, no sense in making it long like a bed. We're not gonna use that. And we're gonna set up here. Our shelters are over there. So this will be our hangout spot and then when it's time to go to bed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you're there, you go here. That's plenty wide, I think. Right, we're gonna have hangover too. <laughs> Test drive. Oh yeah, no, okay. No, no. That'll do. Bam. if it's too short. <laughs> we complete our framework for the bench. And I just got to secure it all now with Canadian jam knots. So I'm going to secure the first three levels of logs with the jam knot. So for the jam knot, it's really easy. It's just like a constrictor knot. So I want to tie a tight uh, knot at the bottom. I'm going to tie a looser overhand knot right in front of it. But don't, don't, uh, don't cinch it down yet. So you want to just go around everything. I'm going to go underneath. The support logs, the big ones, and just up to the top log on a diagonal. You slide, you're running in through the uh, loose knot, and you gotta just kind of cinch, cinch it together. Yeah, that's on there real tight, and then whenever you want to loosen it up, you just kind of pull the tail and uh, it loosens up real easy. But we don't want it loose because we don't want to fall down. So tight it is. Oh, you want that one? Yeah. <laughs> that can be your seat. Check, check out. Oh yeah. Perfect height. Nice. Get our backrest in here. We probably don't even honestly need more than three. Get another one or two, but we build in there, Michael. Fire reflector. Oh! Right now I'm just pounding sticks in the ground. Uh -huh. There's an end game though. Yep. Yep. Now Michael there is making his fire reflector. We're gonna go around and try and find some logs to fill in for the fire reflector. Now you don't need to go chop down trees for this at all. Definitely you don't even want to do that. I would rather use stuff like like that, that rotted piece of wood around the ground. Actually I'm gonna cut that up and we'll use that. on a knot, I'm sure. I just found this choice piece of red oak. It wasn't laying on the ground, it was actually up on an angle, I pushed it over. But it is seasoned to perfection. It's got a natural check in it, shedding its bark. This will be prime, prime firewood. I get so excited over wood. So excited over the red oak. What are you crying about, man? Jeez Louise. You good? Yeah, that red oak splits like a dream. So as you can probably tell, we're losing light. We're just kind of trying to get uh, our fire prep done before it gets too dark. That way we can start the fire once it gets dark. And we're not running around trying to get some small stuff made and all that crazy stuff. So we have our majority of our firewood, if not all of it already all set up. What do you see, buddy? It's behind the scenes, behind the scenes.
Well, everything's all squared away. It's about 4.50 right now, almost 5 o'clock, and it's going to get dark any time. So we've got our bench made, we've got our fire reflector built, we've got all of our fire prep done and laid out, ready to go. We've got our headlamps out, and uh, just preparing for dark. So before it gets too dark, we wanted to show you guys what we we're going to have for supper. We've got a plethora of good food here. Mike brought these awesome ribeye steaks. I don't know if you can see it through there, but it's a nice, uh, super marbly. It's all, it has to have a skewer through it to hold it together. That's, and it's roped off too. That's how uh, tender it is. So that's gonna be supper, main, main course. And to go with the steaks, we have these red skin potatoes. We've got four of them, two for each of us. And I've also got two cloves of garlic, one for each of us. I know it sounds like a lot, but once you cook them, they lose a lot of their potency and it just adds a lot of good flavor to have that much in there. And you can't, and we're gonna cook that, sorry, in a tin foil, like hobo dinners. So with that, we'll also go butter, a bunch of butter. I made up these spice uh, straws, you know, like you, so you just cut the straw, melt it, and you can put salt, pepper. I put salt in one, pepper in one, and seasoning salt in one. So we've also got onion to go in with the potatoes and the garlic and the salt. And we got paper plates this time, using the old noggin. And we've also got something really good for breakfast tomorrow, but I'm not gonna give that away just yet. You'll have to wait and see. Got all our firewood cut up and stacked there. Ready for the night. There she goes. So the potatoes take a little bit longer to cook than the steaks do. So we're going to cut our potatoes into thin strips like this, and then I'm gonna cut them again so they're really small and thin, and then, so they cook easy and quickly. Um, I'm gonna do that with the garlic, the onions, all that stuff, wrap them in the tin foil, and it'll take about half an hour to cook. So we'll put them on the coals before we put the steaks on and uh, try and time it so that they're done at the same time. Nice chunk of butter in there. A couple nice chunks of butter in there. And I throw all my minced up garlic and onions on. Oh, that smells so good. Save a little bit for Mike. <laughs> Some pepper. Yeah, I think that's good. It should be done a certain way. Like I said, tin foil has to be shiny side in. It should be shiny side in. And then I'm gonna wrap it by folding up this way. I'm just kind of folding it down like a burrito. You want it to be a little bit flat, right? The flatter it is, the quicker it'll cook, the more even it'll cook. Take the sides, roll them up. You see that's kind of bowing out there at the top. I didn't have enough uh, um, tin foil to, to fully cover it. But that's okay, because we have the second piece. I'm gonna put that part down so it's fully covered, flatten it out, wrap it up again. I'm gonna wrap it really tight this time in the middle so it stays. Pull those guys up. And that's good. Ho oh, ho ho, baby. Some real nice looking ribeyes. Just about done. We got our potatoes down here underneath. Mine's down there. It's done. I cut them real thin. Mike cut his a little bit thicker and they're not done quite as quite yet. And our steaks are just about done. Nice and seared. Been flipping them every now and then. And they are just going to be fantastic, I'm sure. Pretty crispy, eh? Oh yeah, almost too much done. Almost. I'm really excited about this food. And this beer, oh I'm gonna crack a beer. Well, beer number three, or two and a half I guess. Headstock IPA from Nickelbrook, and it is very citrusy and nice and bitter. Uh, it's going down really good, 7% beer, so awesome out here in the cool weather.
Joe's beer reviews. <laughs> 101. <laughs> <laughs> Those ribeye steaks were killer, and the potatoes were really good. A little, a little on the garlicky side. A uh, heavy garlic. Heavy garlic. So, and maybe we'll keep the uh, the coons away tonight. But uh, yeah, not much left to do but just sit by the fire tonight, finish up the rest of the burgers, and head to bed. It's about 10 o'clock, so not too much longer. Maybe another hour or so to sit by the fire. But pretty good day. What do you think? Great day. Yeah. Got a lot didn't rain. Got a lot done, so we will see you guys in the morning for surprise breakfast. That was weird. <laughs> Good morning, Scoop. Well, Michael, what are you thinking? Oh, I slept beautiful. Me too. It's pretty good in here, eh? Comfortable. Comfy. Lots of space. Yeah. Sounds alright. I like this setup. Probably do it again. What do you think, Scope? One more time? One time for the people? One time for the people? One time for the people? Did you sleep at all, bud? On point, all night, just like that. He's a good boy. He's a good doggy. So we've been away from the fire for about nine and a half, ten hours, and uh, we were kind of wondering if it was still going to be going or not. Oh, man. She's toasty. Oh, really? Yeah, so we can just throw some, we're going to go collect some twigs, throw it on there, fan it, get that fire going, make up some uh, some good breakfast. There's a ton of heat coming off that dish. That's good. All hardwood coals, man. Oh, Mike, we almost forgot. Yeah, we got, uh, got our morning wood here. <laughs> we stored our morning wood under the veg. Uh, all right, that was kind of kind of silly. Like a Canadian, look at that. Since we don't want to start a long fire today, because that'll be too much to put out before we leave, right? Yeah, just get them out the way and then. You're gonna dirt it. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously we're making sausage and egg McMuffins, or mu just muffins, because we're not at McDonald's, but somebody dropped the eggs in the coals. We won't say who. It was me. It was Joe. Jerk ass Joe. That's done, son. Look at that bad boy. Oh, yeah. Well, we don't have egg. We have sausage, melted cheese, butter, English muffin, and some might find this weird, I'm sure, but I'm going to put some salt on that piece. Is there salt in your life? No, we're not. Salt. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see how this goes. Some eggs. <laughs> All right. Just about to tear down the shelter now, pack up everything, get out of here. This shelter worked out really cool, super happy with it. I think it'll have a couple different ap applications in different kind of weather. Um, you could fit four people in here easy. We had Scout was tied to this tree right here, and then I gave him a long lead, and he slept in the middle on top of my Reflectix. And either of us on either side, if it would have rained, we'd have been fine. If it would have snowed, it would have been fine. It had to have been rain or snowing sideways for any kind of problem. And even if that was the case, it could have taken my mest, uh, my 5x7 uh, tarp that I had underneath me, and draped it over the, the hole of the, the door and made, made actual a door out of it. Um, yeah, 
pretty cool. First time trying something like this, so happy, happy with it. Are you happy with it, Joe? I'm happy with it, Mike. <laughs> Oh, you got your knickers on. <laughs> Do you want a hand? Do you want a hand? Right? Yeah, well, I'm asking, I'm offering this time. You got her, you got her, you got her. <laughs> knickers! Can't even breathe yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. We're out of here. Mike's got to drive about three hours to get home. My wife's got to take the car to work, so things have to happen in life. But we were able to come out here. It was a fun time. Thank you, Mike, for coming. Yep, thanks for having me. Okay, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>